So my initial welcome to you was in Māori. I'm from New Zealand. I've actually been in Hong Kong for only 18 months. So some of you have got children that are longer in Hong Kong than I have been in Hong Kong. And, uh, but I've abso absolutely come to love it. Uh, previously, as I said, uh, I was from New Zealand and I was the head of one of the largest uh, schools, Christian schools in New Zealand. I'd been there 17 years. Uh, I've had 34 years in education and 17 years as head of a, uh, the second largest Christian school in New Zealand. In actual fact, we uh, were one of the top, in the top 10% of uh, schools in New Zealand. Interestingly, we never strove, we did not strive to be the t one of the top schools. We turned out like that because of our ethos and the things that we thought were important in the school. For me, what am I passionate about? I'm actually passionate about making a difference in society. I'm passionate about that the students who leave the school that I'm head of will actually have an impact in society. They'll do something and it'll be for good. They say that vision is a picture of the future. Vision is a picture of the future. And for you, this is why when you're looking to choose a school for your son or for your daughter, it is so important that you understand what is the vision of the school? What's the mission statement of the school? Because without a doubt, a school will shape your son. A school will shape your daughter. The theme of the talk that I want to give uh, this afternoon is around about what is, what is at the heart of an education your child will delight to grow in. Now it's really interesting, isn't it? And, and coming from New Zealand, what do parents hold as the most important for the value of education compared to what do families in Hong Kong value as the most important? And there is a difference. Uh, there is a difference in terms of the focus for Hong Kong families is very much academic, very much focused on making sure that there is the highest academic achievement and standard for their children. And I will take nothing away from that, but I actually want to say at the heart of for what your son or daughter wants is an education that they will delight in. I think the proudest and happiest moments that you have as a parent, I'm a, I'm a father of four children, a parent of four children. Uh, they're all very much well past high school age. Uh, the youngest is 21, the oldest is 27. But I tell you, my greatest moments of joy is when I see my children enjoying themselves, when I see my children laughing, when I see my children smiling. There's something about when they are delighting in something, my heart warms for that. What would it be like if they had that same laughter, that same joy, that same happiness towards an education that they are going through? And it seems really strange, doesn't it? You know, it's as if I'm promoting an education that's all about games and all about fun. Not at all. But I tell you that your battle as a parent is when your child wakes up in the morning and excitedly they say, I want to go to school. I want to go to school. I love school. It is the place where I am getting a lot of enjoyment from and a very good education that comes with it. Now, interestingly, we're here at the Kindergarten International Schools Fair. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the word kindergarten is a German word. The first part, Kinder, talks about children, and the second, Garten, is garden. And in actual fact, the word kindergarten was by, uh, first um, came, come up with by Frederick Froebel. He was a German educator, and he coined the phrase kindergarten. And for him, it was that children would be like in a garden. And when you think about what a garden is like, it's a place to explore. It's a place of curiosity. It's a place of learning. It's a place where children are, are moving around freely to be able to explore something new. So he, he talked about children are like tiny flowers. They're varied and need care. Each one is beautiful alone and glorious when seen in the community of peers. So interestingly... 
A kindergarten is a place where children should delight to be. And that, to me, is what a school should be like as well. I want to say, however, that there are four different types of education that your child could receive. And I'm going to briefly go through each of those. And you might be going, how on earth does Richard Vanderpile, the head of Christian Alliance International School, say there is a dangerous education? Well, I'll tell you how there can be a dangerous education. It's an education that says your child is just a brain. It's an education that says your child is only academic. And it focuses on academic alone. And when a school only focuses on the academic, it's only going to focus on testing and making sure the students learn knowledge, facts, and that's it. It's very dangerous. There might be a good academic mind, but this the danger is when a heart is not shaping it and controlling it. And that's where you can also get a deficient education. And I often will talk about a deficient education that's better than a dangerous one, okay? A dangerous one says the mind only is important. A better one is to say that there's also a heart that needs to be shaped. But you know that an education that only focuses on the mind, that only focuses on the heart, is still deficient. It's deficient because it has no impact. It is not making a difference in society. And that's where I come to a delightful education. Now, a delightful one is one that actually uses the head, the heart, and the hands. It's an education that will have an impact. And that's why I think it's a delightful one, because it's a delight for other people. Now, I do put a fourth one there, and that's from my own personal background. I believe, actually, there's a divine education. And that is, as a Christian school, we use Christian values and towards God. And interestingly, every school will be shaping the purpose and thinking for your son or daughter. And for me, I believe within a Christian school context, you get the very best. So here is the mission statement of Christian Alliance International School. It is to cultivate learners with knowledge, skills, integrity, and discernment, growing in love for God and service to humanity. And what I want to say is that that is a delightful mission statement for a school. Notice some things about it. It starts with the inward. It starts with your child's heart, their disposition. And it moves into something which is practical, to love God and to love humanity. So, a beautiful phrase that we use at the school is to talk about sharpening the mind, shaping the heart for serving hands. And this is where we talk again that the knowledge is not purely the mastery of knowledge. That learning is not just about mastering facts, and that is it. Do you know that a good education for a sharp mind is one that will actually translate into wisdom? You see, we can teach children so many facts. We can teach them information. But if they do not know how to use that information well, which is wisdom, then it doesn't affect the purpose that it should do. We talk about shaping hearts. We talk about what is the disposition that we want or that your child or son should have. And that is one that is towards kindness. That is one that is towards love and serving hands practically. I'll talk about some of these things in more detail. So how do we make a delightful school? Well, some of the things that we have here is the nature of the curriculum. I think there are three things that make a curriculum delightful experiences for your children. And the first one is this. We want the curriculum to help them to learn to understand. Do you know that a, a sharp mind and a curriculum that actually helps them to critique and to be critical thinkers is vitally important, absolutely important. A delightful education isn't just about entertainment, it's about academic rigor at the same time. And so we want students to understand what is the world like, to understand what's going on around them. 
when they are exploring things, do they actually fully understand everything that they are learning and applying for it? We want children to learn for appreciation. They should just know that some things are just beautiful to learn. Do you know that one of the dangers when you're in a school, when your school is purely focused on academic, is this question that your children, and I know they're young, but as they grow up, they will ask this question of their teachers. Is what we are learning today in the test? Is this going to be in the test? And what they're asking the teacher is this question. Should I bother to learn this or not? Basically, they're saying, if it's not going to be in the test, then why should I learn it? And do you know that a delightful education says, do you know there is more to life than just learning for the test? There are so many things that, in actual fact, a test cannot even measure. So we learn for appreciation. We learn for enjoyment. We learn to actually just delight in things around us. You take a musician. Take a musician. Do you know there is an absolute need for that musician to have mastery, isn't there? If they're a pianist, well, they've got to put in hours and hours and hours of practice to master the skill of playing the piano. But, you know, if that is all they are doing and there is no joy in it, they're missing something hugely in it. It becomes a tiresome. It becomes a burden. But when they are playing and they are loving what they're doing, their appreciation of it, that is when their learning is so much stronger. You see, the research says this, that when children enjoy what they are learning, when they love what they are learning, it comes so much easy, easier. It is so much a nicer way for them to be able to pick these things up because of enjoyment. You know, we do the things that we love. And learning for responsible action. This is really important too. And this is where it comes down to a really good education. Is it making a difference in the society that your children are living in? There is a huge difference between sympathy and compassion. A delightful education says this. It is need, you need to be, you know, sympathy, what does that mean? I feel sorry for you. I see you're in a difficult position. I feel sad for you. You know, that's nice, but it has no impact. It has no impact on the person who is going through that period of difficulty. But compassion says this, I will come to you and I will help you. I will, I will do something for you in order to alleviate the pain that you are suffering. And you know, that is learning for responsible action. A dangerous education will just focus on the cognitive, the mind. A deficient one will still shape the heart, but it is a delightful one which actually says, let's go out and make a difference and let others enjoy what you have been learning. And so we get to here, education is not the filling of a pot, but a lighting of the fire. I think if we said to our children, the only reason you're going to school is to learn things to fill your head, and then you're going to regurgitate them in a test, they would ask the question, what's the purpose of that? Is that all education is? It's actually the lighting of a fire. It's the lighting of curiosity. It is the lighting of a desire to grow in wisdom for these students as they do this. I think we've all, we all know this, and this is for me really where we start to get to the heart of a delightful education. You know the difference, I'm sure, between resume virtues and eulogy virtues. I'm sure all of you have at some point, you've been to a funeral, and people have got up to talk about the person who has passed away, and they talk about the beautiful aspects of that person. And I don't know about you, but I've sat there sometimes listening to that and thinking, oh, I wish I was like that person. I hope they say those things about me in, in, in the future. You see, those are eulogy virtues. And what do they tend to talk about? They don't say, oh, he turned up to work every day on time. They talk about her love. They talk about how she was a nice person to be with, the compassion that she showed. They talk about what comes out of the heart. Now, those are eulogy virtues, and that is what a delightful education needs to grow within your son or daughter. 
It is the virtues of love and mercy and care and compassion because those are the things that we know count so importantly. All of us have been in, in groups and we've been with a group of people and a group of strangers and, and someone walks away and we think, you know, that person has stature. That person has a presence. They were nice to be hanging around with. And that's what a delightful education will also focus on. It'll focus on the stature and presence of your person. What's a resume virtue? You know, they're important. Of course they are. A resume virtue says you were punctual to work, you were productive, you did all of these things. But what we do know is that an education that only focuses on your resume preparing you for a job and misses out what is the heart behind it is a very dangerous and deficient education. At the heart of a delightful education is the teacher. And the children will model the teacher. So you need to ask yourselves when you walk around a school, as you're visiting schools, what is the interaction between the teacher and the students? What is the, the sense of enjoyment? You know, do you walk into a classroom? Do you walk into a kindergarten room, a prep room? Do you walk into a grade one room? And do you get a sense that you know, even by the design of the classroom, they're all sitting in, well, today they have to sit in individual rows. But what is it like normally? Is it individual chairs and seats all facing the front? Because it's a very academic, we're only here for learning. We're only here for what you are going to learn in terms of knowledge. Or are even the seats in the classroom grouped together where students are face to face? So there's communication, there's collaboration, there's working together. Is that the type of school? Now, when you walk into schools, look for those things. Look for the way that the is the teacher predominantly at the front of the classroom? Or is the teacher on her knee sitting next to a, a, a student, which could be your son or daughter, and talking to them? Um, how are they doing the reading groups and all of those things? Look for those things in terms of the education for your son or daughter. Here's our last point to leave you with. At Christian Alliance International School, and I always like to stop halfway through this, Christian Alliance International School does not strive to be the best school in Hong Kong. Full stop. Well, you'd be going, why on earth would I send my son or daughter to a school that does not strive to be the best school in Hong Kong? But look at what it says. But the best school for Hong Kong. And do you know that changing one word, one little word from in to for has a huge impact on the nature of that school. And I'll tell you why. Because if we wanted to be the best school in Hong Kong, the first thing we would have to do is to, to decide in what. So let's say that we wanted to be the best school academically in Hong Kong. And some of you as parents are going, yay, you know, I want the best academic school in Hong Kong. Well, I'll tell you what we would do. How would we choose your children? What we would do is we'd give them all an entrance test. And then what we would do is we'd take the brightest, the brightest kids, and do you know what we would end up saying to the rest of the children? You're of no worth to us. Because you will not you will not add to what we want to be. We want to be the best in Hong Kong academically. So for the rest of your children, you're of no value. That is terrible. That is the worst thing that a school can say to a child. Imagine if we wanted to be the best school in Hong Kong for basketball. Nothing wrong with that. I like basketball. But if we were going to be the best school in Hong Kong for basketball, how would we do our entrance, our, our choosing of students? We'd ask all the parents to come in. We'd be looking at them and we'd be saying, we're all the tall parents. You know, we want the tall parents, want the tall children. Why? Because that will meet our goal. What do we say to the other parents and their children? You're of no worth to us. And a school should never do that. And yet, I can tell you implicitly, it does. A school does that. Because when a school says we want to be the best school in this area, it will, by virtue of that, tell others it will not add value to it. You change one word from in to for and suddenly you shift away from being the best in something to actually looking at your son and looking at your daughter. Because when you're going to be the best school for Hong Kong, you're asking yourself this question, what is the nature of the student who graduates from our school? Is that student going to be the best for Hong Kong? 
the best for the globe, for the world. And how are they going to be the best for that? People with sharp minds, people who are academically able to critique and articulate their ideas. It is people who have a soft heart, a heart of love and compassion, and it is students who say, I know what to do, I feel it's good to do that, I will go out and I will serve others. And that's why for us at Christian Alliance International School, that's our ethos. Our ethos is to be the best for. Now, do you remember that I said at the very beginning that I was the head of a Christian school in New Zealand for 17 years and we were in the top 10% of schools in New Zealand? Do you know that we never had that as our goal? It came to be because we didn't decide to be the best in New Zealand, but the best for New Zealand. And so we encouraged our children to be the best for New Zealand. And by virtue of that, they studied hard, they did well, and they were a blessing to many people. So for us to conclude at Christian Alliance International School, that's our heart. And that means is that we are going to look at your son and we're going to look at your daughter and we're going to say when they graduate at the age of 18, will they be good for the society in which they live? And that to me is when you get to the heart of a delightful education. It is one that will have an impact on others. So look, thank you very much for coming and uh, really, really appreciate you to be here. We have a very good looking vice principal <laughs> who's just arrived there as well. But um, look, thank you very much and I think we're just in the hall across there if you want any further information. That's uh, right. booth number 16. Number 16, lovely. All right, thanks very much. Thank you.